Alright, so this is my 67 Sunbeam Alpine, and the problem I had with it, it left me stranded this past weekend, had to grab a tow strap and tow it home, and the problem I had with it um, was I had uh, engine rotation and uh, I had fuel, but uh, I didn't have any spark. So I looked for, you know, for the normal stuff, and uh, I suspected things like uh, this power wire going into the HEI right here, and I checked these wires here, and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't getting any spark. And it's a fairly new HEI that I've got in there. The HEI is out of a, a Oldsmobile. It's a Oldsmobile V8 HEI uh, that I've adapted to run in this Sunbeam Alpine. And uh, I never suspected the cap and rotor because uh, not a whole lot of miles on this cap and rotor, maybe just over a thousand miles. But what I found when I got it home and I started taking it apart was, uh, sure enough, if you look, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, there's that burnt area. So from the uh, cap and from the coil, you got, I don't know, 40,000 volts for an HEI going in right there. And then the rotor, of course, then distributes that spark to spark plug wire, spark plug wire, spark plug wire, spark plug wire. Now it's a uh, V8 distributor, so I've eliminated this terminal and this terminal and this terminal and this terminal because this isn't a V8, it's a four cylinder. Um, also on the reluctor, I've taken the, uh, the uh, extra teeth off of that, so now there's only four. So if you look at the guts of this distributor inside, it looks like a, uh, a four cylinder HEI distributor and not an eight cylinder HEI distributor in that it doesn't have uh, eight contact po uh, points inside there uh, to fire off, uh, it's only got four. So I don't have any straight voltage here. All the metal is removed. Same here, same here, same here. Drilled it completely out all the way through the cap. Uh, so there's nowhere for, uh, for this rotor to spend, uh, send park, spark there. You can send spark there. Can't send it there. Can send it there. Can't send it there. Can send it there. Can't send it there. Can send it there. And then after I drilled the metal out, I just filled the, uh, the hole with, uh, with RTD on those four. So. I don't know if it's a problem with, uh, with the coil creating too much voltage now and, and it doesn't have eight places to go. Now the voltage has to go to uh, only you know half. It's got half the distance to discharge to in the same amount of time. Maybe I need a beefier cap. But what happened was I had 40,000 volts here that's supposed to simply go right here. And it's supposed to, you know, there, fire. Okay, wait a second, fire. Okay, wait a second, fire. Okay, wait a second, fire. I don't think it l wanted to wait. Um, I think it looked for another place to ground out to. So instead of looking from right here and trying to find its quickest path uh, to a ground, which would be the ground in the spark plug where you set your gap, um, instead of finding that gap all the way through the wires, I think it sensed that there was a much quicker ground it could get to right there. And that ground would be the um, mechanical advance mechanism, the uh, spring that secures, or the screw that secures the spring for the mechanical advance is right underneath that spot right there. And sure enough, on the mechanical advance mechanism, that is burnt as well. And if you look really closely, there is a pinhole where, um, just like a lightning bolt, it just it managed to find it. You know, if you've got two powerful magnets and a piece of plastic in between them, the magnets are still going to attract through the plastic. And uh, in my opinion, what happened here was I had so much spark right here at this point that it just looked for um, a quicker place to get to its destination, just looking for a ground. And once it found that ground right there, and once it grounded to the mechanical advance assembly, that's when uh, the distributor uh, stopped functioning and left me stranded, just stopped running while I was driving it. So if anyone else has any other ideas or theories on this, um, post a comment. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to look for maybe a beefier rotor, um, if they make one. I don't know if they make a cap and rotor set up for, you know, maybe the, the high spark HEIs that people are using in racing applications, because this is all just stock. Um, maybe a beefier, you know, plastic right here, more insulation between this point here and the ground that lies underneath the rotor, that might work. 
What I did in the meantime is I put some RTV on the mechanical advance. Um, so uh, I, I've got a new rotor install, installed, obviously, in this engine, um, which is why it runs. But uh, before I installed that new rotor onto the mechanical advance assembly, I put a bead of RTV on top of each of the mechanical advance uh, screws that, uh, you know, secure the, the springs and, and whatnot in place there. So where this was sparked out to on the other side, on the mechanical advance side, it's now got some RTV. I figure that RTV um, will lend some insulation, so hopefully this doesn't happen again, but you know, still, I'd like to find a heavier duty or uh, heavier duty rotor for it. And, uh, and that's it. So if you've got any ideas, let me know.